Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement and trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in Reflection of Mine, a game developed by Red Black Spade, published by Rattalika Games and is available for just £7.99. So the premise of the game is pretty simple, we play a good and an evil side of a girl and we have to get to the end of every level basically without dying. So as I said, the premise for another puzzle game is simple, but it is definitely one of the more enjoyable Rattalika games that they have published. Now achievements wise, we only have to play 52 levels and the first three chapters out of four. And now this does not include the two secret levels in the very first chapter, but we'll just get to that a little bit later on. And it's all basically story related. So following this guide, you will miss literally nothing. Also, what I've done, as with previous guides, I'll be showing you the solution on screen playing. But also, because I'm such a stand-up guy for everyone, because I love you, I've also put the text solution as well on every single level, so you have a choice whether you want to follow along on screen or pause the video and just go off the text solution instead. Now, ain't I just noise? Now, every level will be timestamped below, so if you do get stuck or need to see a particular level, take a look at that. Otherwise, this should only take you around one to two hours to complete. So, let's get a cracking, shall we? Now, you don't the difficulty levels don't actually matter. They're phobia or hysteria. You can literally pick any one. One's just easier. One's just harder. Um, obviously, picking either will get you the full achievement list anyway. So, this is just sort of like a prologue, getting used to. How to actually play the game, what buttons we need to interact with, etc, etc. So, chapter 1, The Forest. We are, like I said, going to be doing a couple of prologue levels before. So it's obviously going to be the left stick to move. Um, now obviously, a lot of later levels, it's going to be a little bit tricky, but with everything on screen, you should have no problems. So there's a little symbol just in front of us right here. Now, as long as both your characters are on there at the same time, you press A and it will save the game. Well, once you die, then you can revert back to that save. But it, again, it'll only work if both the characters are on that symbol. So again, we're gonna just move to the right. Um, if you do end up making a mistake, you can actually press the X button, or square on PlayStation, of course, to turn back time just a little bit, which makes it a lot easier. And then you can use the B button to zoom. Do, 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 do. Apparently I was in a disco or something there. Um, the world's crappiest DJ. Yeah, sounds about right. But anyway, this is level one now. So, like I said, obviously I'm not going to be uh, doing commentary throughout the whole thing. It's completely up to you now whether you just follow along exactly what I do on screen or whether you just want to pause the video and then just use the uh, your D-pad. I would highly recommend using your D-pad and just going along with the text solution there at the bottom of the screen. So, hopefully... Um, it's quite spaced out and it's easy to follow. Hopefully you don't have any problems with it. Um, but this level, for example, so like I said, whenever it says save, obviously that means that both characters will be on the symbol. So that means you need to press the A button, again, uh, cross on PlayStation, to be able to save. So hopefully, again, the directions are extremely easy enough, though. But obviously, I will be back in just a little bit because there's going to be a, quite a few more game mechanics, etc., etc. Enjoy!
So we're going to go through these uh, memories, which are going to happen quite a lot uh, throughout the game. And you can always tell it's a memory because it says memories in the top left hand corner. Uh, very, very easy. Most of the time you're just sort of going from either left to right. You need to talk to a character or two. And you just end up looking for that symbol, going on it, and then heading in towards the next level. So the memories are simple pimple. Mojimple. See, I'm a rhymist and I didn't know it. Oh, damn it! So this first chapter is the only chapter that has any enemies in it and with that as you can see the owl um, it's gonna go in a pattern so as you can see where it says fast and it's got um, the uh, next bit of solution in brackets you need to have a look on screen first to sort of see where the owl is and then input the code um, in brackets obviously the one in brackets you're gonna have to do fast so I mean it's it's basically pretty self-explanatory and um, but obviously you know just have a look on the screen see where the enemy is first and then go ahead and do the next bit of the solution now the enemies again they're very easy they'll either go from left to right or in a very uh, particular pattern so really it's it's not too hard you may die a couple of times i died i think 13 times oh my god what the hell okay so that's cool um with some kind of crazy ass weird spider thing now. Now this tends to happen in a lot of Rata Laika games. There's always some creepy ass thing. But anyway, hopefully you got the gist of what you need to do where it says fast on the old text solution. And that is a goddamn creepy scream as well. Well played. Well played, Red Black Spade. So, again. Like I said, we're on to level 10 now. So I'll see the ones that are not in brackets, you can take your time with it. The ones where it says fast and the ones in brackets, again, you've got to be fast. Make sure to have a look where the enemy is on screen and then go for it then. So I know I've explained that two or three times, but, you know, just in case it's diff.
so then, that is the first main 12 levels done. Now, I've got to mention, in each chapter, there are 12 main levels, 4 key levels, and 2 secret levels. So, what we need to obviously do now, we're just going to get through these little memory bits once again. Try not to poop your pants. Okay, it's not that scary, but it does look quite creepy, and that's some brilliant artwork. But these are what the key levels look like now. So, from obviously top to bottom, it goes in order level 3, level 5, etc. For some reason, I go on to level 7 first, because, you know, how many, how many people is that going to piss off? <laughs> And <laughs> screw with the... It kind of screwed with mine, actually. I like things in a particular order. So I decided to screw my own head up. But these are... They're a lot easier, uh, basically, than the main levels. So it's just four key levels that we've got to do now. The ones with the question mark. At uh, the main menu there. Okay, so now we'll get the achievement for collecting all four levels. Now, you see the question mark in the bottom right-hand corner? They would now indicate the secret level, but we don't actually need to do the secret levels for the forest. Um, they're a little bit tricky as well, to be honest, but we don't actually need to do it. So what we can do is just head back and then start Chapter 2, The Hotel. Now, Chapter 2, The Hotel, and Chapter 3, The Church, we will need to do the secret levels, so they are fine. But we can actually uh, go ahead and skip the secret levels in the forest, which um, honestly is fine because that made it <laughs> wasn't sort of too difficult, but there was a lot to sort of get through. Um, but like I said, we're just going to play through these little memory bits. Now there are no enemies um, in the next two chapters. There are no enemies like there were uh, in, in the previous chapter in the forest. So obviously this time we're, we're going out. We're going with keys, we're having to find keys and unlocking doors and things, but you won't actually need to look at the screen if you don't want to, to do that. Again, you can just have a look at the tech solution at the bottom.
Ooh, excuse me.
So, now then we have found all the keys, so this time we are going to be playing the secret level, which is the question mark there at the bottom right hand corner. Um, we have to do another little bit of memory first. By the way, there is some pretty cool music in this game as well, I probably enjoyed it. But, and now I'm going to explain why we didn't need to do the forest achievement uh, secret levels. Basically, we unlocked the two boss, uh, two, you know, beating the boss achievements at the end of the main levels in the forest. But, like I said, for this chapter and the next chapter, we'll actually get an achievement for beating the boss at the end of the secret levels. So it will be doing, obviously, we've done the main levels, we've done the key levels, and we're going to do the two secret levels. Quite, <laughs> as you can see, quite a lot more input. Um, but again, just take your time with it, and obviously, if it's easy, if it's easier for you, just say what you see, um, which may make it easier. So up and down and all around, etc., etc. Sorry, I'll shut my mouth now. And so once that secret level is done then, we should now pop the achievement for defeating the ugly one. Which is, a, <laughs> which is a bit harsh. What happened to hashtag be kind, yo? Can't be calling things ugly, can't be calling anyone ugly. In fact, you can't call anyone anything these days because you'll get hated for it. And everyone will get offended by it. Anyway, no, moving on, we are going to start moving on to the church now. So. As you can see then, we've only got three achievements left, and it is for basically completing the um, 12 main levels of the church, the keys, and the secret levels. We don't have to do the fourth chapter, the asylum. I don't in this video, but of course you're more than welcome to if you so choose. Now, there is going to be another game mechanic that we're going to be getting used to, and that is basically we can throw a cross. And we'll be able to see it now in this memory when we go through the church door.
So there it is then. So there's the cross. You will automatically pick it up and then you use the X or the square button to actually throw it. And you can use it to destroy slash um, invert or destroy. What was the opposite of destroy? Fix? Instroy? Um, sort of buildings and pillars and things like that. Um, so in the text walkthrough, I will be putting... Um, X slash square because of course it depends whether you're playing on Xbox or PlayStation at a point where it needs to be used so Yeah, don't hopefully you won't get confused. So as you can see there already Go left a couple of times up right and then X slash square for Xbox or PlayStation again depending on what you're on So this isn't too bad, but what I do highly advise is every time you end up throwing a cross um, just wait a second or two before moving again because this um, as you've seen a short little animation cutscene happens and you can't actually move your character so Every time you throw a square just wait for a second for the animation to um, Do its thing and then you can move on Now then, from level 5 and beyond, there's going to be another cutscene that will introduce us to teleport plates. So again, just like you've been doing with um, when you've been throwing the cross, just take a second or two every time you do throw a cross or you step on one of these platforms before you continue with your button inputs. As again, there is a short time where you can't actually move your characters after throwing slash being teleported. Now in the text guide, these breaks are actually indicated with a comma. So hopefully you will be uh, quite aware 
of that. So if it's sort of down, down, comma, that means that you've just stepped onto a teleport plate, for example. So wait a second or two before you throw your other thing or you continue on your thing. Oh my god, excuse me again, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, I'm childish, you don't have to tell me twice. <laughs>
So we are basically coming up to the boss now and it may look difficult because it's going to tell us that we have to hit both crosses at the boss at the same time but of course all we're doing is just following the text walkthrough but like I said like you've been doing just every time there you've got to throw a cross or you've, you end up uh, transporting or teleporting remember to just take a second or two to wait before you move on in order to destroy this bitch.
reflection of mine. So after you complete that big mofo, that's it, that's basically the end of the game. Like I said, you can, can continue on with the Asylum, I know there's an excellent Steam walkthrough which has all of the solutions for the Asylum if you want to go ahead and do that, but if you want you can actually just chill out now, and as you can see you should now have 11 out of 11, loving life, so congratulations on another 1000 out of 1000 and another Platinum Trophy. Hopefully, though, this guide did help, whether you chose to follow me on screen or use the tech solution, of course. Either way, I really do hope that it helped. So thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. Don't, of course, forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share the video wherever you can. It would be highly appreciated. Don't forget to follow me on all my socials. Twitter, Instagram, also on Patreon as well. If you want to check any of those out, the links are provided in the description below the video. A big shout out to TimG84 and all the others out there who are continuing to support the show on Patreon. It's very, extremely, highly appreciated. But thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I shall see you in the next one. Big love.